Oh, hello viewer. Let's get that round for you. Yeah. Right. There we go. Right, oh, just giving me coffee. Um, welcome back to 54A. Now then, I was doing a little bit of practice. No, can't find them. Anyway, <coughs> I was doing a little bit of practice on this big piece of walnut. And I had these glass glass beads, varying colours. I'll just use the blue and gold. And I was setting them round the rim like so. And it looked terrible, to be honest. It looked absolutely awful. But, you know, I've got to try these things. So I've cut them all off. So now I'm left with this weird shape. Which I'm going to turn into something else. Um, probably change this shape totally. I might keep this rim and hollow out there. We'll see in a bit anyway. But first, videos and questions. Now, all of us that do videos, we get questions about the project that we've done on the videos. That's fine. I like answering the questions. And if I could be of any help, that's great. <coughs> but, <laughs> sometimes I get the most stupid questions. And here's one for you. A while ago I did, and the title was, a lacquered purple heart bowl. Clues in the title, you see, lacquered. And towards the end of the video, I even showed you how I was spraying the lacquer onto the bowl. I think I did about five coats. And uh, I had this question a couple of weeks ago on it. How did you get the shine? What polish did you use? Well, <laughs> I did answer him, <laughs> but we'll skip through the videos. I do it, especially if the video is about 20 minutes long like mine are. I, mean, I think the average viewing time is about 7 minutes. You skip through to the interesting bits. But in my videos I do try and explain what I'm doing as I'm going along. I keep stopping the lathe, tell you what I'm doing next, what I'm going to do next, what I'm using. Uh, which is why my videos are so long. But it would be great if people actually just skip through the video just to see if I do answer their question before they ask the question. Sometimes it's it's legitimate, but that was it was so funny. What polish do you use? You know, lacquered purple heart. Well, anyway, there you go. Do you want me to change the way I do my videos? In other words, do you want me to shut up? Um, if so, just let me know. Or if you want me to stay as I am, where I say I keep stopping the lathe, telling you what I'm doing next, uh, I try and keep them uh, as short as possible with the editing, but they still work out about 20 minutes long, and I know it's too long really. And the only way I can make it shorter is not to speak. So let me know what you want, and uh, I'll see if I can accommodate. I've had a bit more organisation in the shed. As you can see, there's a nice new tidy little shelves around here now. It's taking all my little projects, uh, bins down here for pen blanks and pen kits, and small clamps that I use sometimes. Of course, the most important stuff the coffee making stuff, my fire writer and various other odds and ends which are all nice Italy in boxes now so that's took a while to do but um, it's worth it keeping it all organised okay I'm going to get this big lump on the lathe and see if I can do anything with it okay first things first let's try and get rid of this little ridge here and sort of round the whole bottom of the bowl off which is a shame because I'd already polished it, but still, there you go. 
So you, when you experiment things don't always work out how you want them. So we get to change it into something else. Just roughly shape that the same as I can, as I've got it underneath. Just a tiny bit more to go on that corner. But just gonna hollow that out into a bowl now. So uh, I should get on with that. See how it goes. Got a bit further and uh, been using mainly the half inch bowl gouge but I do use quite a lot these little carbide cutters these round ones this is a 10 mil just to get a nice curve round there uh, I think I said it before but a lot of turners they say carbide cutters oh it's not proper turning you should use traditional tools there's no rules. If you're happy using a carbide cutter and you want to turn some wood, use it. I use both. That's wood, that's a lathe, it turns. That's wood turning. There you go. <laughs> right, I'm going to carry on with this now and then think of something to do with this. I don't know. I haven't got a clue. It's getting there now. I'm just going to take this rim a bit thinner. It wants to be about half the thickness of what it is. finishing scrapes in the inside now I've got that as thin as I want it I'm really tempted to do something with this but I don't know what uh, I'll have a think about it while I'm finishing the inside off and I'm just doing that again with a carbide cutter if I can pick the right one up as 
to 13 mil I think and if they find them a little bit vicious don't hold them at exactly 90 degree or 180 degree tilt it back slightly and you get a less vicious cut Just had a light bulb moment. I said I wanted to do something with this rim. I don't want to go over the top, which is unusual for me. Um, I thought just putting a groove in there and using some black milliput. Yeah, that'll do. I think. Take it over to my other bench and mix some milliput up. There you go, milliput. Now I don't think I've done a video with this before. Um, it's really good stuff. It's basically two-part um, epoxy. You get the colour and the hardener, and you mix equal quantities of each to so knead it together. Now I'm only going to mix half of this, what I've got left, um, because once you've mixed it you've got to use it. So I'd rather mix not enough and then do a little bit more. So that's the hardener and now for the colour, same amount. one side, well wrap it back up again like that. and now gloves on knead it together basically it's, it's like uh, plasticine or play-doh or something I suppose and mix it well together so there's no streaks in it at all the warmth of your hand will, will soften it up slightly. It's quite cold in here today, so it's a bit tough at the moment, but it'll soon warm up with the heat from my hands. And just keep mixing it up until it's all black. It comes in other colours as well. You've got the white. terracotta I think there's a, a silver I'm not sure there's, there is another color but I shall put a link below anyway to the milliput company smashing people and uh, quite a few videos around of this stuff right be back in a minute Right, it's thoroughly kneaded and mixed together now, I can't see any streaks in it. So, it's just a question of pressing it into the groove. Really press it down as hard as you can, so there's no little gaps in it. And uh, once that's done, let it dry. It does take a couple of hours, which doesn't bother me because it's nearly dinner time anyway. And, uh, and you can skim it off on the lathe then and polish it up just like the wood there's no difference it'll polish up a treat and that's basically all you do so I'll show you the rest when it's uh, when I've completed it nearly there I tend to go, do it in like a little just roll it into a little sausage shape and uh, pop it in that way if you get it sort of like that 
Just press it well into the groove. Um, it was Jim Overton, Jimson stuff. And if you look up Jimson stuff on YouTube, he does a lot of work with this milliput, and uh, he sort of put me onto this. And uh, thank you very much, Jim, because it's it's great stuff. It's, get some really nice effects with it. I'm sure there's a lot I can do with it that I haven't done yet. So I've just been experimenting really. I haven't done a video before. Done one or two little odds and ends with it. So Jimson stuff. Have a look for that. I'll put a link in anyway. Right, I've left that to set. It's nice and solid now. I'm going to skim that off. Give it a few finishing cuts. Cut in the bowl, polish it up, usual stuff and I'll show you the finished thing. So that's skim that, skim in the bowl, Yorkshire grit, Hampshire sheen, we'll see what it looks like. walnut is just it polishes up so nice and um, I think the band of milliput is quite effective but I have made a mistake it's not milliput's fault it's my fault and I'm going to rectify it I shall get a pointer better known as a pencil and show you if I can uh, get the right angle on this. There you go. See that bit there? And there's another bit there. I didn't quite put enough milliput in and it wasn't until I was polishing it the polish fills these little gaps in. So what I've got to do is just get rid of those little bits of polish in there and mix a tiny little bit of milliput up and fill the, fill the little holes. There's quite a few all the way around actually. There's some there as well, but overall the effect I think is is excellent. I should definitely be using milliput again, and you can see it polishes up really nice as well. It's a lovely shine on the actual milliput. There you go. So I'm just going to rectify that, and um, that'll be done. So I'll see you later. that's that done that's a lot better now really pleased with that so I just rushed the milliput a bit the first time but filled the little holes in and look at that and the milliput shines up just as nice as the wood does I'm really pleased with this stuff and uh, this is a really basic um, thing to do with, with this milliput its possibilities are endless um, and I shall definitely be using it probably with the different colours as well on uh, future pieces so uh, yep yeah, that's it so I'll put a link below to the milliput and I'll also put a link below to Jimson stuff because he works a lot with this milliput and he's got quite a lot of projects that you can have a look at so uh, well worth a look anyway that's it the disaster bowl that turned into not a bad bowl really not bad at all that's it then folks see you soon for the next one don't forget to subscribe cheers now bye